Hello, and welcome to this lesson on data and data binding in Svelte. In this video, we learn how to communicate between the script section and a markup with one-way data binding. Web applications often need to show some sort of data to its users. This could be something like the latest film reviews or a list of items in a cart. Usually, we store data in an external database. But once we get it from the server, it needs to be stored in the computer's memory, with all the other temporary data. We can use any data container that JavaScript supports, but they need to be defined inside a component script section. To define a script section, we just use a pair of script tags, like we would in HTML. As an example, we'll create a variable in the root app component. We'll start by removing everything in the component and then create a script section. Inside the tags, we'll define a constant called name and set its value to John. Now, let's say we want to output that name in a greeting on the page. Well, that's where data binding comes into the picture. Data binding is how we communicate between the script section and the markup section. If we hard code our data into the HTML of our markup, we'll always need to manually update it whenever the data changes. What we want instead is to update the data in a single place and have Svelte take care of updating the HTML for us. We can do that easily with a process called string interpolation. With string interpolation, we reference our data by wrapping it in a pair of curly braces, also known as mustache syntax. To demonstrate, let's head back to the editor and define an h1 tag with a greeting. Then, we'll reference our constant in curly braces between the tags. If we save and take a look in the browser, we'll see the greeting message with the name John. Now, let's go back and change the name to something else, like Jane. Then, if we save and head back to the browser, we can see the name has updated. So, Svelte links the data in the constant to where we reference it in curly braces. We're not limited to using string interpolation inside an element's tags. We can also use it to bind data to attributes. With attribute binding, we still use the curly braces, but this time as the value of an attribute. To demonstrate, let's add another constant, called heading ID, and then give it a value of greeting. Then, we'll bind it to the ID attribute of the H1 tag. If we go to the browser and inspect the heading in the dev tools, we'll see that Svelte applied greeting as the attribute value. Because attribute binding is so common, the Svelte team has created a shorthand syntax for it. If the attribute name is the same as the name of the data we're binding, we can omit it and only use the value in mustache syntax. To demonstrate, let's change our example's heading ID constant to just ID. Then we'll remove the attribute from the h1 tag and just use the ID in mustache syntax. If we save and go to the browser, everything still works, but our code is much leaner. Because styling is such a big part of an application, it's worth it to learn how to bind CSS classes, as well as binding them conditionally. It's especially useful if your styling is utility-based, or you use a utility-based framework, like Tailwind. Dynamic classes work the same as normal attribute binding, but the data we reference contains the name of the class we want to add. Let's say we want to show a message to our users if they enter a valid username on a registration form. For a better user experience, we'll make the text color green if the email's valid, and red if it's not. We'll start by removing the ID constant and its binding to simplify the example. Then, we'll create a style section with a pair of style tags. Inside the tags, we add a class called valid and set its color property to forest green. Then, we'll add another class called invalid with crimson as the color. In the script section, we'll define a constant called status and set its value to one of the classes. And the only thing left to do now is bind status to the class attribute on the heading. So, class equals status. If we save the file and take a look in the browser, the text will be green. 
At this point, it's still just normal attribute binding, we don't have a condition for it yet. But, because Svelte allows us to use basic JavaScript expressions in its attribute bindings, we can use a ternary to conditionally add a class, based on the value of a boolean. To demonstrate, we'll make status a boolean and set it to false. Then in the class binding, we'll write our ternary expression. We'll start with status, as the condition. Then, the valid class, if status is true. Or, invalid, if status is false. If we save and go to the browser, the text will be read. Then, if we come back into the editor and change status to true, the text will be green. So, the ternary works like it should. Because the conditional class binding pattern is so common, Svelte provides us with a specialized directive that allows us to toggle a class based on a condition. A directive is a custom attribute that controls the element's behavior in some way. To use the directive, we add a colon after the class attribute. Then, we specify the name of the class we want to apply if the condition proves true. Finally, we write the condition as the directive's value. To demonstrate, let's replace the ternary expression with the shorthand syntax. So, we say class, then a colon, then valid, and status. If we take a look in the browser, the text is green, so it still works like it did with the ternary. Now, if we want to check for when status is false, we just need to add another directive. So, class, then colon, then invalid, and we'll add an exclamation mark before status for a false evaluation. Then, up here, we'll change status to false. If we save and switch over to the browser, we'll see the text is read. So, the second directive was executed. Alright, that brings this lesson on data binding to a close. In the next video, we'll learn how to handle native DOM events with another directive. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.